We're not any other school. We're different. We're a great school. Kids come out of here, they're gonna compete. They're gonna compete at levels that other people can't compete. People might get better scores in STAR or worse scores, but I think that as a school, we try our best to prepare our kids to compete when they go to college, in the workplace, be resilient, not give up, work hard. I mean, just all those things that matter in life. It's, they better be resilient. And we need to be that. Welcome back for the third episode of the Mustang Message. For those of you that have indicated on your parent choice survey in Skyward that your child will be returning to face-to-face -face instruction, either full-time or part-time, this message is for you. We have been preparing the building to safely welcome our students back to Memorial High School. Our ninth graders will be able to join us on Monday, November 9th, and our 10th, 11th, and 12th graders will be able to return the following week on Monday, November 16th. We will be reviewing the key points of our return to school safety plan throughout today's message. The complete plan will be uploaded electronically via Skyward and our campus website. Please take time to review and contact us if you have any questions. We will begin with Mr. Castillo, who will be reviewing morning drop-off procedures. Thank you, Mr. Alvarez. I'm going to address four different scenarios in the morning. Scenario 1, your student rides the bus. All parents received a request through Skyward to complete a transportation survey where you indicated whether or not your student will be riding the bus. If you have not completed the survey, please log on to your parent Skyward and complete it. Students riding the bus to school will enter through the bus loading zone where they will be escorted to a classroom to wait to be released to first period. It is important for students to remember that once they arrive, they will not be allowed to leave the campus and must immediately enter the building. Scenario 2 you drop off your student at school. There are two designated drop-off areas for students. Students whose last name begins with letter A through K will enter through the main doors on the south side of the campus. Students whose last name begins with letters L through Z will be dropped off on the west side of the building and enter through the doors by the gym. Scenario three, your student who walks to school. Students who walk to school will have to enter through the doors designated by their last names. Scenario 4. Your student drives to school. Students will enter by the M on the south side of the campus and park in the west parking lot. Only one student will be allowed in the vehicle at all times, and students must be wearing a mask prior to exiting their vehicle. Once they have exited their vehicle, they must report to their designated entrance. Mrs. Bechtel will cover the COVID screening process that will take place every morning. Thank you, Mr. Castillo. While at home, before coming to school, parents should screen for the following symptoms not related to a current health condition. Feeling feverish or a temperature greater or equal to 100 degrees. Loss of taste or smell. Cough. Difficulty breathing. Shortness of breath. Headache. Chills. Sore throat. Shaking or exaggerated shivering. Significant muscle pain or ache. Diarrhea. Fatigue congestion or runny nose, nausea or vomiting, or any known close contact with a person who is lab confirmed to have COVID-19 within the last 14 days. If students have any of these symptoms, they should stay home and participate through remote learning. Now let's address each morning drop-off scenario. For students riding the bus to campus, Students waiting for the bus must be wearing their mask while at the bus stop and keep it on for the remainder of the day. Students will be screened by a staff member prior to boarding the bus. For those students being dropped off at school, walking to school, or driving, students should be wearing their mask before they exit the vehicle. Students will be screened by a staff member as they enter through their designated entrances. Please note, Students will not be permitted to enter the building until 7.45 a.m. Early bird arrivals are strongly discouraged, and any student dropped off before the building is open 
will not be allowed inside the building early and will not be monitored. Parents, building access will be limited to exceptional circumstances and by appointment only. There will not be any unescorted access to the school grounds and no food deliveries will be permitted throughout the school day. Mrs. Rodriguez will now discuss which measures have been put in place to help protect your students while on campus. Thank you, Mrs. Bechtel. All students returning to face-to-face -face instruction will be provided with one reusable face covering. Masks must be worn at all times while on school grounds, including while waiting at bus stops and while riding on school buses. If any person is unable to comply due to a developmental or medical condition, a face shield may be worn as an alternative, but this must be cleared by an administrator and the nurse. While in the classroom, students and teachers will have desk shields at their workstations and will be expected to remain seated behind them throughout the class period. We do understand that it may be impractical during some UIL activities and other extracurricular activities to wear either face masks or shields during times of exercise, for instance. During these times, students will adhere to six foot distance guidelines. Parents and students, be confident that there will be frequent cleaning, disinfecting of high-touched areas such as desks, light switches, door handles, computers, bathrooms, and our health clinic will be utilizing EPA-approved disinfectants for COVID-19. Additional cleaning will also be completed nightly, in addition to the utilization of an antimicrobial misting system. Mrs. Caldwell will be addressing the work and learning environments on campus. Thank you, Ms. Rodriguez. Classrooms have been set up with student desks spread six feet apart and all facing the same direction. All classrooms have maximum occupancy signs posted on the door and hand sanitizer is available for students and staff members as they walk in. Whenever possible throughout the day, students and staff will remain six feet apart and any supplies that must be shared will be disinfected between uses. Classroom materials that cannot be disinfected, such as magazines, books, etc., will be limited for use by one person only and teachers will spray student desks and chairs with disinfectant and each student will wipe their own workstations prior to leaving class. There will be visual reminders displayed for social distancing throughout common areas and signage and floor markings will be utilized to help with six feet social distancing. Students will be eating in the cafeteria and small gym and spread out six feet apart. Lounges will be closed and teachers will eat lunch in their classrooms. During passing periods, traffic flow will be routed to minimize student contact with students staying to their far right during passing periods. Students will not be sent to the nurse throughout the day for minor health concerns and will only be allowed access to the well clinic area for needs such as daily scheduled medications, daily scheduled procedures, diabetic care, blood glucose monitoring, loss to tooth or tooth pain, wound care or ice pack needed for small bumps and bruises bloody nose, and health and safety assessments. We will also have an isolation area set up for students who exhibit any COVID-19 symptoms. So with that said, COVID has played havoc on all of us. So I just wanna make sure students that when you do return to campus, that you pay very close attention to all the safety policies and rules that we are exhibiting on campus. This is for you, this is to protect you and to keep everybody safe on campus. So I'm really stressing that you follow all the discipline measures that we have in place. Parents, we wanna make sure that you are also aware of what is gonna be expected of your child when they do come back face to face. At this time, I'm gonna have Mr. Lozano go ahead and cover that information on COVID-19 Disciplinary Guide. Thank you, Mrs. Caldwell. As the district reopens its doors to students, we want to ensure that the safety of our students is of the utmost importance. The discipline guidance outlined in the campus document is expected of all students and required to comply with the safety obligations put in place in the restart plan. By adherence to these requirements, 
which promote healthy behaviors, students will mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Therefore, to protect the students and staff, the district is requiring that all students wear a mask in school, on district property, and during school-related activities, and maintain social distance from other individuals. Failure to do so will be considered disregard to school authority, insubordination, and be subject to discipline under the Student Code of Conduct. The following are also COVID-19 expectations while students return to face-to-face -face instruction. Adhering to social distance procedures when applicable. Wearing a mask that follows the dress code policy and does not contain profane, abusive, or lewd material. Always covering their mouth and nose with a tissue when coughing or sneezing or using the inside of their elbow. Students, please understand that the following actions are some of the COVID-19 student conduct violations that could receive disciplinary consequences. Purposely interfering with another student's mask. Removing your mask with the intention to eject fluids on another student or staff member. Intentionally, knowingly, and recklessly coughing, sneezing, spitting, or expelling or otherwise causing contact of any form of bodily fluids or secretions onto another person. Intentionally invading another person's social distance perimeter. Taking off from campus once arriving by bus or dropped off by parents or guardians. Students, these guidelines have been put in place to keep us all safe. Please adhere to them so that we can ensure the safe return to our school. This was an overview of our return to school safety plan. There is more information in the plan that parents and students should familiarize themselves with. It is very important that you stay safe and we continue to work together to make sure we have a great transition to face-to-face -face instruction. Thank you once again and go Mustangs!